Want to see how simple it is to connect Spring Boot with Kafka? You won't believe it. Let's dive in. To start with, I'm going to create a Docker container. And we can see right now that I don't have anything going in my Docker desktop. I have a Docker Compose for Kafka. And in this Docker Compose, I simply have version 3 defined services zookeeper i'm using the confluent image and kafka i have some basic parameters set up and that's it so let's go through and let's actually start this container i can do this very quickly with docker up we can go back to our docker desktop and see that we now have this up and running i'm going to open two windows and i will ssh into my docker the first one, I'm going to create a topic. So I'm now SSH into that. I'm going to create a topic in our Docker. And I will use the commands to connect up to lo our local host. I'm creating a new topic called First Topic. So that's now created. And I can actually go through and let's verify the version of Kafka I'm using. I can do that with the dash version. And I can quickly go through and list out the topics I've created. And I see that the first topic is actually there. So now that we have that, I can actually go through and describe that topic to find out if there's anything interesting about that I can go through here and describe it to to see what anything special about that topic there we go we can see that it has one replica so it's just one copy of it and it is defined as partition zero okay so we should be ready to go let's start a listener up for this so we can display any activity that's going on and that's actually a consumer so we can do that quickly here we can do that with the kafka console con consumer command notice i'm not using a dot sh some older tutorials you may find may have that and that's a different version of the kafka image i'm using the official image from Confluent. So let's go ahead and start this and I will give it the topic name of first topic. And at this point, we're now listening on that. So let's go through and open up another window, another shell for now. And in this shell, I will go through and we'll actually be able to produce some messages. So my other window here, I will go through and I will connect up to I'll go ahead and connect up into the shell again. Now that I'm in the shell, I can run a producer message. So I'm going to use the Kafka console producer and give it a broker list and publish on the topic, first topic. So now when I send a message, I'll share a consumer up on the top up here, receives it. Okay, so now I have the basic information set up. I will stop our producer. I'll do that with control C. But for now, I'll leave the receiver. So now we're gonna jump and create a Java project. And in that Java project, I'm going to create a Spring Boot project. I will call this KF Demo. This will be Java. I'll give it a group of Thomas J Consulting. I'll use Java 8. We're going to create a jar file. I'm going to use 2.7.11 for the Spring Boot. I'm going to add Lombok. And for the web, I'll add in Spring Web. And then I want to add Kafka. So I'll add in Spring for Kafka. Okay, 
let's go through and create a project. Okay, now our project's up and running. We can see that we still have our Docker desktop running. I'll put that in the background for now. And let's actually go through and start this project to make sure it runs. We'll enable the long block annotations. And it comes up listed on port 8080. Okay, so adding Kafka in here is very, very simple. I'm going to go into our resources or application.property. And the first thing I'm going to do is add in server port equals 8080 because we can set our port number in here. That's the default, but I also have that set in here. And since I want to use Kafka, I need to tell Kafka where the bootstrap servers are. And in my case, they're on localhost port 29092. So I have the Docker container mapped to my local host for port 29092 has passed through. And I'm also going to go ahead and define my Kafka topic in my property files. And we define that as first topic. Okay, so let's go through and we can actually start writing some code for this. I'm going to create a controller so I need a new package called controller. And in here, I'm going to call this a Kafka REST controller. And annotate this as a REST controller. I'm also going to give it a request mapping. And it's going to be slash API slash V1. And I'll add in a post mapping. And we'll just say MSG for now. So our URL is slash API slash V1 slash MSG. And I'm just going to create a public string process message. And we're going to pass in a message. So we need a request body. And I'm just going to make that a string for now. We're going to call it a message. Now we need to do something. Eventually, we need to return what's going on. I'm just going to say done for now. But now I need a controller. And I actually need a Kafka service to do this. So I'm going to create a Kafka producer service. And I'm just going to say send my message. So we need to go through and start creating these entities. For now, I'm just going to go through and auto wire these in here. I don't have the class, so I need to create the class. So let's go create that. I'll create a new package for my services and I'll call that service. And then within that, I'll create my new class for the producer service. Okay, I'm going to annotate this to a service. And then we need to make sure that we have our public method. I can resolve this annotation now. Let's refactor this. I made it lowercase. Should be uppercase. There we go. And then I can add the import in here. Then I need to make sure we have our send implemented in here. So this is going to be a public void. We're going to send the message. And this needs to be a string for the message. Okay, so what all do we actually need for this producer service? Well, it's fairly simple. I'm going to add SL4J in here so I can add some logging. I need to have a value for our Kafka topic. Remember, we put that in our properties. So that should be found in our Kafka topic. Kafka.topic. We need to import value annotation. And I'm going to say private 
string topic. And now that we have that, I'm going to add a couple other variables because as we send Kafka, I'm going to keep track of the partition. We're going to use partition zero. If you read about Kafka, you can learn about the number of partitions, the number of brokers, and all that stuff. Right now, we just have one broker, so I'm going to send everything to partition zero. I have another variable here called a key. And for the key, I'm just going to say my key. Okay, and those are hard-coded values for right now. In addition, we're going to bring in a variable for a final variable for a Kafka template and we'll import this now that we have the Kafka template in here I'm going to create a singleton for a Kafka producer service I'm going to pass that in so Spring can auto-wire that for us. Okay. So now that we have that, we can start actually doing some coding on the send message. On the send message, we can have our Kafka template and call our send. We want to send in the topic that we want to send it to. We can specify a partition. We can specify a key. And then, of course, we want to add our message. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and add a login here right now, since I added SL4J to log this. Okay, so we have some basic logging in here. I'm going to stop this, and I'm now going to start this again. And let's see if we can start this up. Okay, start it up. I don't see any errors here. So that's a good sign. So let's go through and let's add a post. So we said the post was going to be HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 8080 API v1 MSG. Okay. And that's going to be a post. We're going to add a body and the bodies going to be a raw text and I'm just going to say hello Spring Boot and let's see what this does. Keep in mind I still have our listener over here so, so let's send this. We got back or done which is promising. Oh and we actually got back hello Spring Boot and our listener here And in our code, we can see that we got a bunch of messages here. One Spring Boot set up Kafka. And these are interesting. Then eventually, we got my log message here that we sent out to partition zero with my key. Okay. You may not like all these log messages in here, and it's actually a very quick and simple way to get rid of those. I can add one property to remove those. I can simply set the logging level to off. So let's go through and do that, and let's see how this looks. Okay, let's send a new message. Hi there. Hello there again. Our consumer received that. And if we go look at the logging now, we did not get that large set of logging from Kafka, from the Kafka library. I like that a little bit better myself. Okay, that's it. We're done. We have produced messages into Spring Boot a Kafka library. Now, what about consuming? Well, let's stop this receiver for now, and let's actually go through and let's write a consuming service. So I'll say a new service. I'm going to call it Kafka 
consuming consumer service. So I'm going to annotate that as a service. I'm going to add some logging. I'm going to add a Kafka listener. And the Kafka listener, I'm actually going to pass in the values rather than putting into a value and try to move it in. I'm actually going to use Spring expression language to read that in from the Kafka topic from the property file. I'm going to add a process message method. And in this process message, I'm going to get the message. I'm also going to get some Kafka header information. I'm going to get the string, the partitions, the topics, the list, and then I'm going to print them out. So let's see what this does. Let me stop this and restart it. Remember, I stopped the other listener that we had. So there's only one listener now. And let's go back and let's send a new message. Okay. Oh, look at this. Sent message. We sent that out. And then we received something from our consumer service. Let's go through and annotate that a little bit more. We'll see. Received. There we go. Let's run this again. Fire this rest control off again. And we'll see we got that message. So we're running exactly what we want to do. Typically, you would have your producer in one Spring Boot service, and you would have your consumer in a separate Spring Boot service. But they can be at the same ones like we're doing now. Now, remember we stopped the receiver on the command line? Let's start that Kafka console consumer again. And let's see what this looks like. Since I had from the beginning, it read all the messages that we had. Let's go through and let's send a new message now. New message, one, two, three. And let's see what happens here. Well, we got back new message, one, two, three. And on the console... We also got new message one, two, three. That's because they're both listening to the same partition. So if you learn about Kafka, you'll understand how partitions work, how groups work, how topics work. And in this case, we have multiple consumers listening to the same partition, partition zero. So they're all being fanned out. If you only want one, you would have certain consumers listening on partition zero one two three four but if you want to have multiple partitions you also need to have multiple brokers so in this case we only have one broker set up in our property but if you had multiple brokers you would have you know bootstrap service server comma server colon port comma server colon port to define that so there you go i'll post this code on my github everything should be there this works and now we've spent only a few minutes to learn how to set up Kafka on a Docker environment, how to use it and publish it on a command line and consume it on a command line, write a publisher in Spring Boot very, very quickly and simply, how to write a consumer in Spring Boot very quickly and simply. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please follow me and like my video and watch for new content. Thank you very much.